A strange weather pattern is unfolding across the United States, which will lead to a spring heat wave for much of the United States by the middle of next week, but it will also return the threat of significant severe weather as we go into the middle and end of May for the Great Plains, the Ohio Valley, and even parts of the Midwest. So in today's forecast, we are going to break down exactly what you need to know about the weather that will be impacting the United States over the next couple of weeks. And we'll begin with what's happening across the country today. And right now, we actually have a low pressure center that is spinning back over in Missouri and Arkansas and this is leading to some scattered severe weather this afternoon and evening from Kentucky and Tennessee back into the Dixie Alley. On the other hand, we have a bunch of showers and storms that are ongoing across the Gulf in addition to South Texas and by tomorrow, we are actually going to have a brand new low pressure system that is going to develop back over here in the northeastern Gulf, back over near Florida and this should lead to at least a little bit more severe weather and flooding rainfall in the southeast over the next few days. Now across areas like the Great Plains and even the Midwest, things are very quiet for the most part right now. Not really any imminent severe weather in these areas, but I am concerned by the middle and end of this upcoming week where we could actually see the return of significant severe weather as a much more active weather pattern is likely by the middle of May. Now let's talk more about the weather pattern that'll be impacting the United States over the next couple of weeks. And right now we've been dealing with an Omega block weather pattern, which is actually now not really much of an Omega block anymore. Instead, we have a high pressure system that's back over in the southwest and then a low pressure system that has been ongoing back over in Missouri and Arkansas which is leading to some showers and thunderstorms and one of the biggest stories for the weekend is that this high pressure system will stay dominant back over in the Rockies which means it should prevent most significant severe weather events from happening over the next three to five days mainly across the Great Plains in the Midwest but even with that happening we have a low pressure system back over near the Gulf and this should lead to at least some isolated severe weather and flooding rainfall across the southeast and along the East Coast as we go into this weekend. Now, by early next week, that low pressure system will weaken as it moves towards the Ohio Valley, but it should continue to bring at least some scattered showers and also colder weather. But by the middle of next week, we are expecting the return of big storm systems back over along the West Coast. And whenever we get storm systems like this in the month of May and whenever they eject over the Rockies, these can be big, severe weather makers. And that's why we need to keep a very close eye on this by around May 14th and 15th. You'll notice that the GFS model does have have this moving across the Rockies, even into the Northern Plains, which honestly, if we got a storm system this far to the north this time of the year, we don't always see severe weather out of these types of systems, mainly because it requires a very strong moisture pull from the south, in addition to also there being no capping. And capping basically means that we have a temperature inversion in the lower half of the atmosphere that would prevent storms from developing. So this is not necessarily a slam dunk for a big severe weather event by the middle of next week, but I do think beyond the middle of next week, we are going to continue to see a very active weather pattern. So even if that storm system doesn't bring significant severe weather, look at our jet stream by the late weekend and even into the following week, which obviously this is very far out. Things could definitely change. But if we see something like this, this would promote a lot of active weather across the United States and also a bunch of different storm systems impacting the country, especially if we get stuff that goes right over Colorado and Wyoming and moves into the Central Plains. These almost always cause threats for significant severe weather in the month of May. So we definitely need to keep a very close eye on this upcoming weather pattern, almost every model and ensemble group has been in pretty good agreement that we should see a much more meridional jet stream as we go into the middle and end of May, which would promote a more significant and potentially robust threat of at least active weather across the United States, but if not, at least some level of more significant severe weather. So let's put this into more simplistic terms with the future radar over the next week or two, beginning with what's happening Friday and Saturday. We are expecting an active weather pattern to continue back along the East Coast. We have one low pressure system that'll try to form near the Gulf. Another one back over in the Northeast, which will bring heavy rainfall, but severe weather not expected in the Northeast. As we go into late Saturday and into Sunday, notice how it stays active back over along the Gulf Coast states. High pressure will start to build back over in the Great Lakes region, which will lead many areas to be dry from Kansas and Oklahoma and Texas all the way back into the Northeast as we go into Sunday. And then by Monday and Tuesday, that low pressure system will start to move more to the north, developing into more of a system that'll continue to bring some gusty winds, isolated severe weather, and heavy rainfall on Monday and Tuesday. And then eventually by late Tuesday and Wednesday, the storm system is going to get a lot broader and weaker, but still will bring enough moisture for there to be some rainfall along the East Coast. So by late Tuesday and Wednesday, around the 13th and 14th, we do anticipate that that storm system will move over the Rockies and could bring the potential for some level of severe weather. Now, this is definitely a question mark as of right now in terms of how much severe weather it might end up bringing, but I do think we'll at least 
see some scattered severe storms in the northern plains and then a highly conditional risk of severe weather in place back over in the central and southern plains which if anything were to develop in this region all hazards of severe weather would be possible but it's a big if i don't know if anything's even going to develop on wednesday just granted that this storm system is going to be so far off to the north for this time of the year as well but nonetheless it is something that we need to keep a close eye on as we go into the middle of next week at the minimum though i do think it'll bring gusty winds and at least some isolated to scattered severe weather wednesday thursday and friday and then eventually by next weekend this is when things do become a lot more uncertain but you can see in at least in the long-term trends here that we are likely going to see a fairly active weather pattern for much of the country as we go into the middle and end of may so definitely stay weather aware again we'll keep you posted with the latest on whatever happens with this storm system over the next few days it's pretty likely that we'll continue to at least have a video every other day talking about this especially if there is any sort of risk of severe weather in place and over the next seven days we are anticipating a boatload of rainfall along the east coast of the united states and anywhere in the yellow or orange you are anticipating around four to eight inches of rainfall between now all the way through thursday of next week definitely much needed rainfall for areas like florida parts of florida are dealing with their worst drought in over 20 years right now so definitely need rain in some of these areas actually back over near fort myers florida it's near about a 10 to 11 inch deficit of rainfall right now so definitely need rainfall across florida but other states along the east coast will be picking up at least a generous one to two inches of rainfall including areas like new england now on the other hand our temperatures are going to be pretty interesting over the next week or two we'll continue to have below average temperatures along the east coast and in the southern plains over the weekend but above average temperatures will continue in the northern plains as it's going to be dry and no low pressure centers anywhere nearby in those areas and then by monday into tuesday notice how all that warm air is building in the northern plains the midwest the great lakes and the rockies a little bit of colder weather back along the west coast and then back over along the gulf coast we are also dealing with below average temperatures but by the middle of next week i do think almost everyone east of the rockies will be dealing with some level of above average temperatures some spots could be as much as 10 to 25 degrees above average in the central and southern plains cold air will start to build along the west coast and in the rockies by wednesday as that low pressure center moves over the rockies that should bring at least some colder weather for those areas and then by thursday friday and as well as saturday which is around may 15th to the 17th i would still anticipate there being above average temperatures anywhere east of the rockies this is also going to help to fuel severe weather i think for a long period of time so i think even if we still deal with above average temperatures for a week or two here in the middle and end of may we should at least have a fairly favorable environment for severe weather especially if troughing continues along the rockies and then more ridging is happening back over in the southeast which is honestly something that we've been seeing over the last couple weeks aside from the last seven days we had a lot of this during the you know late portion of april which did lead to multiple severe weather events so this is definitely a weather pattern that we need to be keeping a very close eye on and the climate prediction center agrees with what we've been saying here over the last few minutes with below average temperatures more likely than not west of the great plains and then if you're anywhere in or east of the great plains during the middle and end of next week we should be dealing with above average temperatures especially if you're back over in the northeast including parts of new england and then overall above average rainfall is likely as we go into wednesday thursday friday saturday and sunday of next week which means that we will likely be seeing at least some severe weather which could be significant at times depending on these low pressure systems and all the ingredients that are going to be in place again there are going to be some problems i think with our severe weather setup on wednesday and thursday but i do think there's a better chance that we'll be seeing at least some more organized potential outbreaks during the weekend and perhaps even into the following week but obviously specifics on that are very uncertain as that is still well over seven days from now and just a heads up the risk of severe weather over the next few days will remain low the storm prediction center has a marginal risk of severe weather in place for friday along the gulf coast back up into the mid-atlantic where isolated damaging winds and hail are possible and then by saturday the risk is even lower back over in parts of florida and georgia but i could see this risk at least being a little bit larger to cover more of georgia and southern alabama but generally speaking there's no major outbreaks at least in the near future definitely enjoy the nicer weather while it's here because i do think the middle and end of may are going to be very active and obviously i don't usually upload videos this late in the day but we are not going to have a video on friday the next video will likely be on saturday so make sure you are subscribed to the channel and click the bell icon so you're notified with the latest video updates